Okay, um, today we're going to go over the 20 slide uh, sample exam uh, provided by IBM. Let's see here <clears throat> on the screen. For the Discord viewers, how will they view it? That's a good question. We can reference, okay, yeah, 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 okay, okay. For people on Discord, um, go into the, um, the pinned documents for resources, um, and then I'll share the, compu the computer screen here. Um, in the description of this video, uh, there will be a link to a document. It's like a hub of useful documents. So go in there, I'll open this, put it on the screen here. <clears throat> and today we'll be going over the third link. Uh, it says a 20 slide sample questions posted by IBM James Weaver. Actually, that's the exam itself. We'll be going over the one, two, three, four, doesn't matter. The Manny Gomez old notes wrong answer rationale. Uh, so we'll be going through the questions, figuring out what each of them mean and then figuring out why they're wrong. So I have it on my on-screen projector here, and uh, I'll be sharing that. And you can follow along uh, by having it pulled up. Um, actually, I can share my screen on Discord so you guys can see this. I'll share it. Cool, okay, so now Discord viewers can see it and in live people can see it. There, okay. <clears throat> so then I'll switch to the document camera. Okay, so this first question, so there's a 20, sample, uh, 20 question sample exam from IBM, and we're going through the rationale and all those things. So let me get a pointer so we were able to see. Okay, first question. Which statement will create a quantum circuit with four quantum bits and four classical bits? Let me just confirm we're recording. Okay. Which statement will create a quantum circuit with four quantum bits and four classical bits? So we look at our answer options, we see they're all fairly similar. They all use a function called quantum circuit. And the only difference, or well, the main difference between most of them is the argument inside those parentheses. <clears throat> so we can kind of look at them and work backwards to see what they mean. So taking a look at the first option, we can, uh, some differences are highlighted. There we go. So, this one has two inputs, two arguments, they're technically called. This one has one, so that's the difference in those. And these are also things you'll want to keep an eye out for when you're taking the exam itself. First, uh, the first thing I did was look at the questions and kind of go work backwards to see, because uh, some things are a little bit more obvious than others. So this one has two inputs, this one does not. This one has some funky stuff going on where it has this uh, quantum register stuff. And then the option D has um, a small syntax thing. So again, we'll see this a pretty, pretty common pattern. Um, the syntax is very uh, important on the exam. You might call it a little bit extra, you know, they're very nitpicky. It's just um, nature of the beast. I wish, you know, it wasn't as nitpicky, but that's just how it is. So if we go onto the bottom of the document, um, we can kind of see some rationale here. And I went through, uh, you know, answer A is correct, but let's ignore that. Let's go start from the bottom. So number D, if we look at it, it says incorrect syntax, no brackets needed for quantum circuits. So that is why D is incorrect. It's a small syntax thing. Quantum, the, the quantum circuit function does not need brackets. <clears throat> uh, option, or, uh, question C, it says doesn't make a classical register. Ah, okay. So the function quantum circuits, let me um, pull up the API here. This is gonna be something you wanna get used to uh, internal input. Uh, on my computer here, let me go back. So I just Googled uh, quantum circuit API Qiskit. So whenever you have a question about any of these, you're gonna wanna end it with uh, API Qiskit because it'll bring you the, for the information doc for the function. So click this, this is what you should expect when you see uh, the screen. And if we scroll down a little bit, uh, I like to look at the examples first. So here we have this. Uh, quantum circuit 2, 2, and go up a little bit, <clears throat> and they give us some, some definitions actually, some, some useful examples. It says, for example, quantum circuit 4 creates a quantum circuit, let me zoom in, so this is for the view. quantum circuit 4 creates a quantum circuit with 4 qubits. Quantum circuit 4, 3 
creates a quantum circuit with four qubits and three classical bits. So if we go back to the question, we'll notice that it's asking for a quantum circuit with four quantum bits and four classical bits. So we need both of those numbers there, separated by a, a, a comma. So immediately we can rule out uh, option B, which is uh, the, the rationale here. It says missing the four to make a classical register. <clears throat> so from that, we can also tell that this first number represents how many qubits you want. And the second number represents how many classical qubits you want. And you can also find that in the API as well. So immediately we know B is wrong and D is wrong for those reasons. Now C, um, we can go to this again, the doc and, or the, um, the Google, and we can Google quantum register API Kiskit. So now we see, let's see here, implements a quantum register. And what is a quantum register? It is the thing that sets up our qubits, to, to put it very rudimentally. Um, let's see here, do we have examples? Not seeing it. Either the size or the bits arguments must be provided. If size is none, the register will be pre-populated with bits of the correct time, the type. So C would be correct, let me switch back. If this quantum register instead said, instead said classical register. So right here, we're doing the same thing as A, B, and D, except that we're making it, we're showing all the steps. So we're breaking it down all the way. So uh, A is a shortcut for C kind of. So right here, it says quantum register four, and we're naming it QR. <coughs> So this represents green, represents the same thing. But the problem is we want four quantum bits and four classical bits. And this one creates four quantum bits here, but then it creates four additional quantum bits here. So if this, or in orange right here, quantum register said, Classical register, it would be correct, because then we get four quantum and four classical. But here it's giving us four of two sets of four bits that are both quantum, so that's not correct. So here we see in C, the rationale says, doesn't make a classical register. So here we can see why um, B, C, and D are incorrect. <coughs> okay, so question two. Given the, f the code fragment, what is the probability that a measurement would result in a state of zero? So again, this is our notation. Um, zero is right here on the block sphere, which is a way to visualize a quantum state. And then zero is here on the block sphere. You can see them labeled. So going through the code, the code first line, QC equals quantum circuit one. So we create a quantum circuit with one qubit. <coughs> QC dot RY, so uh, a rotation on the Y axis. So the R stands for rotation and then the Y axis. And then the amount, so three times pi over four. So you can see it bro broken down, three times pi, comma, comma zero, or sorry, three times pi over four, comma zero is the location. So then this simplifies to three pi over four. And then on the block sphere, you can see a little, little diagram here. So down the y-axis, we'll be following this orange line here, and this horizontal right here is pi over two. This middle, the middle is pi over two. And then all the way at the bottom right here on state one is this pi, so you can see it in orange. So if we follow along this, uh, three pi over two is greater than pi over two. So if we're you know, on our merry way, whatever, blah, 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 pi over, we hit pi over two, and then pi over two is equivalent to two pi over four. So if we look at this and compare it to our three pi over four, three pi over four is larger than two pi over four. So knowing that, keeping that in mind, we know we pass the horizontal axis right here. So we go past it so we're somewhere here. We're halfway. We're somewhere between halfway past the or past the axis, the half axis, 
and one. So if we look at our options right here, let's see here, going from the bottom, one, and we know we're not there. We're somewhere here, you know, somewhere at the end of this orange line. We're not all the way at the end, but we're past the middle part. So this one right here would imply that we are right here in the one state. And that's just not true because we're somewhere floating here. Going up a little bit, 0.1464. So if we look at the justification going back real quick, D not pi. We're not at pi. So for C, 3 pi over 4. Okay, so for B, 0.5, that would mean we're here in the center at pi over 2, and we're not. 3 pi over 4 is greater than 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. Hmm. I believe the answer for this one is, is A, and I think this is marked incorrectly. I believe the answer is looking at where it lands and the fact that we want the probability of... Oh! Okay, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So if we look at, if we read A, it says, looking at where it lands, and the fact that we want the probability of state zero and not of state one. So this is one of the problems where it's the wording of, uh, it's with respect to state zero and not state one. So if we were, if this question asked, what's the probability that the measurement would result in state one, then it would be 0.8536, because it's greater. But we're looking for the probability that it would result in state zero. So if it's all the way down here next to one, it's a very small probability that it would suddenly jump all the way to the top. So it's, it's one of those questions where it's the, what matters is um, the thing that might trip you up at the end, it's, it's with respect to state zero and not state one. So if it was asking for state one, it's right here next to state one. So if it was asking with respect, if it would result in state one, it's, it's pretty much state one. But since it's not the case, we're looking for what the measurement, the probability of the measurement that would result in state zero, it's a very small chance. So that's why the answer is C and not A. I remember this tripping me up a while for a good bit. So the answer is C because we're looking for the probability that it would result in state zero, which is it's pretty far, far away. So th this covers um, block spheres, um, which is a way to visualize the quantum state, and then just how to move around the block sphere. I'm going to switch to this screen here. Uh, something that's really useful uh, for learning this stuff. Um, you're going to want to Google Grok block. Um, James Weaver published this. Uh, you'll see his name mentioned in the, the doc uh, right here. Application that helps user visualize quantum states. Here we go. Grok block, application that user helps user understand the block sphere, use it, uh, run it online. Here we go. So this is, oh, oh, here we go. Let me redo that. So Google Grok block, and then click the first link. Uh, James Weaver, here we go. Use it online, the demo. So it's something I really recommend uh, to, to play around with and get familiar, uh, to get familiar with how things affect um, the placement of the qubit on the block sphere. So for example, if we do an X, it'll go from zero to one because it's, it's uh, switching uh, X acts like a, almost like a not gate. So from zero to one, Y similarly, Z um, rotates it around. But if you're at zero and you try to rotate, it, it's, it's hard to see. Hadamard puts us in a state of superposition. Uh, so it goes to the X and then back. And then some funky interactions happen. This is why I say mess around. When you, um, S S's have fun funky interactions. Um, so if you go here and then Hadamard, some stuff happens that you're, you wouldn't expect. So I would say go mess around with this and see what happens uh, with, with different interactions. And S is a little funky, so, so try um, seeing what, what will happen if you use S in different situations. And they ask about this on the exam, too. Uh, going back, we have about three minutes left. So I'll, uh, I don't know if I can do this one in three minutes. Hmm. I'll... I won't end it here, but I want to, yeah, I guess I, I should end it here and say that the answer key is in the back 
and I would say mess around with this block sphere a little bit more. Um, I don't think it's worth uh, starting the next problem if I can't finish it. So again, just covering over uh, these first two that we went over again. This first one <coughs> asks for, um, asks us how to use the quantum circuit function. And the small details, again, that it cares about, oh, you can't see my screen. The small details that it cares about is the syntax. So here, um, C um, could very easily be correct. So don't let it throw you off, because it would be correct if this quantum register was classical register. So it's, C is a, a, a going the long way, but it's, it, it doesn't mean it's incorrect. It, it could, could have been correct very easily if that was different. So don't let that throw you off. Um, B, it's just uh, knowing that quantum circuit, um, it's because this question asks, if the question only asked for four quantum bits, instead of also looking for classical bits, B would be correct. But it wants four quantum and four classical, which is why B is incorrect, and also why A is correct. So don't let those small things throw you off. Um, just keep out for the, the details. And their questions are worded like this on the exam as well. And then for, oh, for two, um, the main points that people might trip up on is that, um, again, the with respect to state zero. So if we're all the way down here, there's a small chance, very small chance that it will go to zero. And that's what we care about. That's why it's 0.164, because if you're down here, there's a small chance. And then um, just recognize that 0.1, or sorry, one is at this lowest level. If this was 0.0, .0 it would be at this top level. 0.5 for, for option B is on the x-axis right here. And 0.8536 <coughs> is in this area. But um, same thing happened to me. Don't let that trip you up because the, the with respect to zero, because you know, some people would initially answer A because it's right here. And it, that's the chance of it being one. It's, it's almost 100% that it would go to one. But we're looking for state zero. So keep an eye out for those things. Um, there are a lot of patterns throughout this test. And those are some of them. Um, try not to overthink. And keep an eye out for the patterns, I would say.